Go has been a challenging game because of what you mentioned, the branching factor. That is, at any point when you can make a move, there's lots and lots of choices that you have to make a subsequent move. And traditional techniques in AI that sort of looked at these subsequent you know, moves and then at the move against that move and the move for that move uh, did not really work. The, the choices were too large, and as you can see in this graphic, the, the, the tree that is being built by looking at all the combinations is too large. So Fernando? they used a very different technique to solve the problem. Right. You, Fernando, you found it impressive? Oh, well, I, I mean, I think a lot of the techniques that were used for AlphaGo have been around since the 80s, frankly, uh, with some minor tweaks. And what's advanced has been, frankly, the hardware and the data. And given that this thing, that the technology, the hardware has advanced, it's allowed us to implement these techniques and develop systems like this. But am I surprised that a machine can beat a human at Go? Well, no. As you said, the the state space of Go, the number of combinations of boards is huge, and it's that's what makes it hard for humans. But machines are better at counting than humans. So quantitative, but not necessarily qualitative. Gary, you think it's also not so impressive? Well, I mean, it, it, it's impressive that they did this several years before people thought that it would happen. Uh, but you have to remember, if you're thinking about, like, are the robots going to take over now, that in Go, you're relying on a very fixed world. The rules are always the same. You can play against yourself hundreds of millions of times. That's right. Um, and so you can simulate things. You get a lot of data. And in the real world, things are constantly changing. And they're constantly changing, and we can't simulate them perfectly. So there was this DARPA competition last year where robots had to do things like open doors and, and drive cars and things like that. And there was a YouTube video, which you should all go home and look at, about bloopers from this. And so the robots were falling over, and um, you know, someone, it's some ragtime music or something like that. And it's hilarious. And the important thing to remember when you watch this video relative to AlphaGo is that everything that was done in this video was actually done in simulation first. So there were robots in simulation simulation were able to open the doors perfectly. And then the real world, you started to have things like friction and, and you know, a little bit, of, well, I guess gravity was already factored in, but you, you had friction and wind and things like that. And then suddenly, because things weren't exactly the same as in the simulation, it didn't work that well anymore. And the techniques in AlphaGo, at least at this stage, are not, I think, robust to going from a simulation to a real world. They're relying on the fact that you can get a lot of data in simulation. And so that's a limit, at least for now, for how this system goes. It might be a component in a larger system someday, but it's not like tomorrow we're going to see robots. Well, we're actually going to see a robot today. The robot that we're going to see today is not going to be able to you know, take over the world. It's, it has nothing like that level of cognition just yet. Mm -hmm.